Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Marnie and I'm here this segment with Mindy Ferguson, the author of five books, including her most recent Bible study, Abraham, Developing Unwavering Faith. This is an eight week study. It has lessons for five days a week, about 25 minutes, 30 minutes a day to do all the reading lookups and answer the questions in the book. And then of course, a weekly group study. There's actually a separate leader's guide that's available with this, or you can download that over at Mindy's site. Um, her ministry is called Fruitful Word uh, Ministries, and she lives in Texas and she's here with us today to talk about her new book. And I'd like to bring her on now. Welcome to you, Mindy. Hi, Marnie. Great Hi. to be here. Yay. So exciting to have you here. And uh, we've loved having you in the past at Bible Study Expo and at uh, meetups in, in um, the Houston area down there. So that was so fun. Thank yes. you for your participation. I enjoyed it. Over the years. Yeah, so much fun. Good to see you. So let's go ahead and dive in. I want to just take us to page, um, let's see, X1, I guess, uh, to page 11 in the beginning, the introduction, and just read one paragraph that I feel like for you planners, it's a good way to um, just kind of get an overview of what the book is going to be about here. I'll read this one. Through this study, you will travel with Abraham along his faith journey. As you watch this budding father of nation question God's plan, take matters into his own hands, and at times compromise truth, you will recognize God's faithfulness at every misstep. I love that. Hmm. If you are like me, you will relate to Abraham's mistakes and be encouraged by his growth. As you journey with this great man of faith through the pages of God's word, like Abraham, I trust you will develop a more unwavering faith that will inspire you to become a greater blessing to others. You too will become an eyewitness to the promise of our God. So that's just the beginning. And this is a wonderful study. I love, um, it's a spacious book. It's a spacious book that doesn't have any tiny print and there's room in here to write the answers, which is yes. so fun. And you take us all over the, so this is all about Abraham, but you take mm -hmm. us all over the Bible. Absolutely. We look at the life of Abraham and then we look at the New Testament and the references to Abraham that are contained there. I just love the consistency of God's yeah. word. Yeah, really, really good. I love right away on page one in uh, chapter, week one, day one, you go, there is not a single book of the Bible that was written by Abraham. He did not speak any recorded prophecy. He was not a conqueror of kingdoms. Yet Abraham is known as the father of the Hebrew nation and as a friend of God. So, yeah. so cool. <laughs> Yeah, there is so much. Abraham is such a relatable um, biblical character um, for men and women alike. There, there is just incredible insight into what it means to develop faith and to have faith in our Lord um, throughout Scripture. Abraham is mentioned with regard to his faith. If you were to say your own personal biggest takeaway from your study of Abraham's life, what would you say? God is worthy of our trust. Mm. Absolutely. So yes. Yeah, I, I loved how I loved, I guess, you know, until I went through this book that you wrote, I, I really never realized how many times he really did like, not do exactly what God said. <laughs> yes. He just, it's like, oh, I just had this picture. I knew he didn't sometimes. But it was shocking to me really how many times. Yeah, um, Abraham obeyed, but there was some partial obedience in there and he struggled and he made mistakes, which is part of what I say makes Abraham so relatable. And by understanding that God used flawed people mm -hmm. um, in the past, it gives us that hope and reminds us that he can use us today to accomplish his purposes. Yeah, there's so much comfort and hope in that. Absolutely. That he's just used to working with broken people. That's kind of yes. all the time. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Well, one of the things that I thought was really intriguing, again, right at the beginning on page two here, you tell us that Abr Abram, that first name that he had, means exalted father. Yes, and you wrote, it occurs to me that whenever someone referred to Abram by name, they were reminding him, of the children he lacked. Yeah. Wow. 
I know. Um, again, it, this story of Abraham and his journey with God is such a great reminder that our God is sovereign, that he is in control of all things. And even Abram's name uh, hinted at his long-term purpose, but his life circumstances didn't reflect that purpose at first. And you know, later God changes name, uh, Abram's name to Abraham. And Abraham actually means father of many. And so both names that he had reflected his purpose. But along the journey, he was prepared to become that father of many and, and the father of the Hebrew nation. Yeah. I, I always like names because my parents named me Marnie, Marnie Joy. And all my life, I would look up the name Marnie and it would be not there. And it would be the closest thing would be myrrh, which is kind of sadness. And um, then, but I kept looking because that didn't make any sense to me because I was like, I don't feel sad. So yes, no, you exude joy. <laughs> and finally found that in Hebrew, the name Marnie actually means joyful. So unbeknownst to my parents, they named wow. me joy. And I do love how God does use names and it's, it, they're so important. I would like you guys to hear Mindy read a little bit of this book uh, for us so you can hear the author in her own voice, her writing style. And let's go to page 11 and just the bottom two paragraphs there, Mindy, if you would. Okay. Um, Lot was without a father and Abram without a son. I suspect Uncle Abram had become like a father to Lot. Abram's heartfelt cries to God in Genesis 15 make it clear he wanted a child. In fact, Abram couldn't think of any reward God could give him that would compare to the gift of having an heir. As Abram and Sarah prepared to follow God's directive, imagine, I imagine Abram probably rationalized. And even um, though God clearly told him to leave behind his people and the household of his father, Abram decided to take Lot along on his journey. That isn't the only compromise Abram made as he exited Ur. And then have you read Exodus 11:31, and we discover that his father, Terah, also went along on that journey. And um, it says, I got a kick out of the wording in this passage. It wasn't Abram who took Terah. It was Terah who took Abram. I get the sense Tara may have been a strong, controlling father. And those of us who have a strong, controlling father can probably write a script detailing the conversation when Abram announced that he and Sarah were leaving Ur and didn't know where they were going. I imagine Tara immediately began to take control. And before Abram could muster up the courage to defy his father's wishes, Tara took his son Abram and his grandson Lot and his daughter-in-law Sarah, and together they set out. From her. I love that. I love that. And of course, I had never noticed that Tara took Abram. That's so amazing. And then you go on uh, a couple pages later and you say, we don't know how many years Abram settled for the familiar, pleasing his earthly dad rather than following his heavenly father. But we do know Abram waited until Tara died to follow God's directive and continue on to Canaan. And I just love how I love how you bring in all of this. In fact, um, over in the study guide on page 21 for that chapter, you have the blanks for us. God told Abraham, Abram to, number one, leave his country. What was the compromise? Number two, leave his people. What was the compromise? Number three, leave his father's household. What was the compromise? To which of these compromises of Abram do you most relate and why? And that's what you're always doing through this whole book is you're bringing it home. Okay, so this is a story about Abram, but it's our story too. Yes, we absolutely. We see ourselves in this scenario. Yeah, um, and you know, for me, I so related with the fact that he took a lot along on his journey. Um, it had to have been difficult for him to leave behind those family relationships oh, that are so important to all of us. And it's not like now when we can just Skype or something, you know, I mean, this was, right. the, uh, this was when you said goodbye, you knew you would never see them again. You know, absolutely. It's a huge, big deal. God was asking him to do. And in the absolutely, beginning, you help us to understand exactly how big of a deal this was. I mean, this wasn't the God who was real familiar and real, um, you know, involved in this family's life. Uh, That's right. 
um, we're told that his father uh, worshipped other gods. You know, his ancestors did. So this this was a big deal. Big deal. Big deal. I'm going to jump us over to page 73. You have us here in Genesis 15, 18, 1 through 5. It says, what similarities do you find between Abraham's greeting of the men and Lot's greetings? Um, talk to us a little bit about what you saw in this passage. So both Abraham and Lot are visited by heavenly beings mm -hmm. and they really have a different response. Just in your own words, just share with, share with us what you are seeing there. Okay. Um, Abraham, um, and I'm doing this from memory, trying to uh, think back. But when the angels of the Lord visited Abraham, he had a sense that that he was in the presence of the Lord, and um, he was um, he prepared a a meal, and he was respectful and um, paused and very aware of the Lord's presence. Lot, on the other hand, um, did not recognize when the angels of the Lord were in his presence. He, he just treated them like any other men. Um, so, you know, Abraham's awareness of God was, <laughs> that's my little dog. I've been gone a lot today and she is acting very needy. I'm so sorry. Can you pick her up? We saw her a little bit in the background. Yes. There. Let me see if I can get her. What's her name? Her name is Molly. Molly. And she's a Yorkie and she's staying just out of my reach. What oh, she okay. wants is carrots. That's her favorite snack for the day. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> well, we will be done shortly and Molly can have her carrots. <laughs> yes. So I wanted to take us over to um, over to page 133 for a moment where you wrote. And I just loved this, um, love this kind of getting toward the end of the book. Now, Abraham had become a man of unwavering faith. One thing I have noticed about people who possess great faith and wait with expectation for the Lord to do something amazing in order to accomplish his purposes in their lives they are often met with skepticism from those with far less faith. And isn't that the truth? It is the truth. And, you know, sometimes we forget that. We want to share what we think God would have us do. And we, we want to share um, details of our, our faith journey with the people around us. And we're, we're sometimes hurt by the fact that they don't understand. Um, and their skepticism, though, it, it, it just encourages us that they need to learn more about our Lord. Yeah. And I think the main thing that I was thinking about when I read that section of the book was about how sometimes we can let that hold us back from following God. And that's absolutely I actually did that multiple times. And it was like and back. And God is bigger than that. He is able to take even those you know, lack of faith on our part and still use us anyway. It did not, yes. you know, I mean, God, he's, Abraham still is the father of the nations. He still is in the hall of fame. Um, all of those things that he failed to do. You know, I, I just found it so encouraging to go through this. I want to have you read one more little section for us before we're done here on page 146. If you would read that middle paragraph, starting with, I suspect Abraham. Okay, I suspect Abraham enjoyed being the grandfather of those twin boys. Harry little Esau was apparently the apple of Isaac's eye and his twin brother Jacob was probably what bullies today might call a mama's boy. The two sons were as opposite as brothers could be. I would guess Abraham spent as much time as he could with Esau and Jacob and explain the importance of obeying, obeying and following the Lord. He probably told them about life back in Ur and made sure they understood that faith in God is worth far more than all the wealth and conveniences he left behind in Mesopotamia. I picture the boys sitting wide eyed on their grandfather's lap, one on each knee, as he told them about the time God empowered his army to rescue their cousin Lot uh, when he was captured by five powerful kings from the northern territories of Canaan, the patriarch. Patriarch probably cautioned them about choosing their companions wisely when he told them of the destruction of the wicked cities of Sodom and Gomorrah. Perhaps the boys cheered as Grandpa Abe told them about the angels God sent to rescue Lot and his family. 
just before the skies rained down that burning sulfur. I trust Abram, Abraham told them of the miraculous birth of their father Isaac and of the covenant promises that were part of their heritage. I love how you write as your, uh, for example, I have never contemplated the reality that Abraham was their grandfather and probably spat him on their knees. Of course he did, you know? Yeah. But, but I love how you bring this stuff out to really bring it into the forefront in our, of our mind. In uh, week eight, day five, you have um, three things to help us with blessed faith. You say, obey without fretting the details wait without taking control, bless without counting the cost. The whole book is just an encouragement to trust God more. You guys need to check this out, Abraham. And uh, Mindy, thank you for writing it. Thank you for being here. Oh, thank you, Marnie. And thank you for tolerating my little Yorkie as she barked in the background. It's cute, cute, cute. Uh, thank you so much. And you guys, if you want to learn more about the book, you just click on the book jacket. That'll take you over to the Amazon page where you can add it to your cart. If you want to learn more about Mindy, click on her photo. That takes you to her webpage. And we will be back shortly.